I know my calm, composed, stoic demeanor may not give you any clues or hints at my internal struggle, but trust me, right now, I'm spiraling. I'm falling down a dark path I swore I'd never walk again. Like a former addict who finds the pipe once again, I have found my long, since abandoned drug. I have become hooked on reading horrible text messages from dudes trying to get laid again. It's been many moons, and some of you who have been around the channel for a while may remember I've made a lot of content covering horrible pickup artists, as well as horrible text messages with self-proclaimed nice guys who were one gentle no away from letting the demon out and just flipping the switch to a full-blown conniption. Like, the word boyfriend would be you know, a winter soldier event that would have them just go ballistic. And I've made quite a bit of content, both laughing at the absurdity of it, as well as using it as an educational tool, like, hey, don't be like these goobers. But over time, I started kind of petering out from doing that, because I just made so much of it. And I stopped indulging in that kind of content until recently. I could only fight the urge for so long. The werewolf is coming out. It's a full moon, and that moon is nothing but fucking cringe. I saw some text messages today that I've just got to go over. Now, before we embark on this journey together, it's important that I let you know that these are two college students. As we go through this, you'll probably assume that it's two 13-year-olds, but that's not the case. These are two college students that worked on a group project together, and now we're coming in after the completion of the project. So, they say... I just emailed Professor the final draft so we should be good, to which the poster says, yay, and then sends a meme, go team. I really enjoyed working with you. You seem like a very sweet and smart girl, and I'd love to take you out sometime. To which they say, that's very kind of you, but I have a boyfriend. <sighs> oh boy. She said the phrase, I have a boyfriend. There is no phrase more powerful in the English language than that. The strongest sentence ever constructed. That's like the nuclear bomb here. I have a boyfriend is a phrase, nay, an incantation, more powerful than a vada kedavra from Harry Potter. And it's just been deployed. So you can already start to speculate where things are going to go south. He responds by saying, Heh, well thanks for leading me on. Which catches her off guard. She says, I'm sorry, but I don't think I've done anything to imply I was interested in dating you. To which he responds, It's just funny how you never brought up that you were taken until now. Which is an interesting thing to respond with because that makes it seem like he expects every girl that's taken to immediately state that upon starting a conversation with a man. Like they need to wear some kind of sign or some kind of label on their forehead that says, Currently in relationship, not available, thank you. Try again at later date. Although she does say that she mentioned her boyfriend. Actually, I did. When I was at your house, I told you my boyfriend was picking me up. Which she's able to counter beautifully by saying, I thought you meant a boy that you were friends with. Because why would you go over to a guy's house if you're dating someone? And she says, because you offered to host and we needed somewhere to work on our project together. My boyfriend knew and didn't care because all we were doing was working. I'm sorry if I did anything to give you the wrong idea. And then he says... You let me buy you a pizza. Now, admittedly, I understand where the guy's coming from here. We all know about the law of equivalent exchange thanks to Full Metal Alchemist, and we have something like that in the real world. If you buy a girl a pizza, she is obligated to have sex with you. It's the pussy for pizza transaction. It, it's as old as time itself. So the fact that he was able to buy her a pizza and he didn't get his winky stinky is shocking. But anyway, he seems to really put a lot of stock in the importance of that pizza like that was going to carry them all the way to marriage like this is a moment she'd remember for the rest of her life or something that pizza that he bought her but I'd, I'd like to backtrack a bit just briefly let's go to the previous chapter where he said i thought you meant a boy you were friends with because why would your boyfriend be okay with you going to a guy's house to work on a project and i feel like that's a dog shit perspective that's not unique to just this guy in this situation i've seen a lot right now where people work under the assumption that if your significant other is doing anything in any capacity with someone of the opposite sex, it means that they're unfaithful to you and they're cheating. But I just don't really subscribe to the belief that most normal, sane people think that way. Of course, there are extenuating circumstances to that, but in this scenario, and in most scenarios like this, where it's just, she's working on a group project with a classmate, I don't know why you'd immediately jump to, she must be a whore 
who's going behind my back to fuck this one goofball in our class and pretending that they're working on a group, pro group project. I just don't think that's something most ordinary people jump to immediately, and in this case, the guy views it as weird that she ever even agreed to go to his house to work on this group project if she was in a relationship, but I just don't understand why that would be viewed as weird. Like, where else are they going to do it? Like, if they go to her place and do it, it's the same problem, right? Now, she has invited a guy over to her house and she's in a relationship to work on this group project. Wouldn't that be the same issue? Or if they go somewhere in public and do it, like a fucking Starbucks or whatever, it's still the same issue. Like, oh, now they went to a public place where people go, like, on dates sometimes to do this group project. So you can always make that argument no matter what. So it just, I don't know, it just doesn't compute with me. But anyway, back to the pizza. I offered to split when you told me you were ordering a pizza and you said it was your treat. If you'd like, I can sell you for half of the cost. Yes, I'd like that. And you ate more of the pizza than I did, so you should pay for like two-thirds of it. Now we're getting into the nitty-gritty math calculations here. Like, well, actually, listen here, Harpy. You ate more of the, the pie than I did, so you're gonna, you're gonna need to reimburse me more for it. And you know what? It wasn't my treat, because this Halloween there was only tricks. You tricked me. You lied by not telling me that you had a boyfriend. So give me extra cash for that pizza, you disgraceful harlot. She's being as gentle as possible here. I imagine she's scared of this individual, and she said as much in the comments of the post. She said that she didn't want to, like, get too aggressive back because then she'd be, like, afraid of what he might do. So it's just, like, I understand where she's coming from. You don't want to, you know, poke and all of that. So she's just like, okay, that's fine. And I'm sorry again if you got the wrong idea, but I thought I made it clear that I viewed this as a professional relationship. Well, you didn't. And then he comes back and says, don't leave me on red. So he's getting very aggressive here. He, he's red in the face. He's steam coming out of the ears. Like, I understand why she wants to, like, tiptoe around this as gracefully and smoothly as possible. And it's something I've said a lot on stream where in the current climate of things, it feels like everyone's more on edge than ever. Like, I've read so many stories over the last couple of years of people snapping at the smallest things. Like, even the most minor inconvenience. Like, this is a story I've referenced a lot, but it's one that actually legitimately sticks with me. There were, there was a murder at a subway where a man shot two subway workers because they went a little heavy on the mayonnaise on his sandwich. Too much mayo was a death sentence for one of the two workers that was shot. The other one did survive, but I mean, it's, it's things like that where you just... It's never really worth pushing back. So in a case like this, I understand why she'd want to be really light about it. And I just want to mention that because I saw a lot of comments like not really grilling her or anything, but just really kind of wondering why she was being so polite in lieu of all of the aggression from this guy. And I totally understand why she would be. I, I really do get it. I just wanted to point that out real quick. But anyway, it wraps up by saying, I don't think this conversation is worth furthering, which is fair. And then he responds saying, It's ridiculous you even chose a guy to work with if you have a man. I bet he was upset even if he pretended not to be. Now, she explained this a little further in the comments. She didn't even choose him to be, like, her group project partner. Apparently the way the groups were chosen were people chose topics and whoever had similar topics worked together. So these two just happen to have the same topics. It's not like she went out of her way to choose this, you know benevolent angel to work with or anything but anyway i understand this was like a very short text exchange it's only like three screenshots here but i just think there's a whole lot to digest and analyze here as we as a species have become more and more isolated all of our socialization and human interaction comes from behind a computer screen now mostly almost all of our interaction with each other is through the internet so it's leading to a lot of people not knowing how to socialize or not knowing how to pick up on like social cues and I don't even really blame individuals for that, but it's led to situations kind of like this where this guy really views that her being off the market, you know, having a boyfriend should mean that she shouldn't do anything at all with another guy, even work on a class project to, with another man. And also, something as simple as buying a pizza shows some kind of romantic interest between the two of them, some kind of mutual romance. So when it turns out that she wasn't interested and it leads to a rejection, it's something that he doesn't know how to handle appropriately. And overall, it is just pretty sad. Yes, it is like equal parts entertaining with some cringe text messages, of course, but at the core of it, there is a problem where people aren't going out in the real world and making genuine human connections. It's all through computers. So when you are in the real world with real humans, you don't really know how to handle things super well. So something as simple as getting like a rejection is 
a much bigger deal than it used to be. And overall, like I said, it's just kind of sad. I wanted to just talk about these text messages because I, I got real <laughs> deep on why. Why would this be the response to something so simple? And, of course, the text messages are very silly, like with the whole fucking pizza side quest thing. But anyway, yeah, I, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. That's it. See ya.